it is absolutely no secret that I am a massive weeb. And every good weeb has some form of anime list, whether that's on my anime list or Kitsu or Annie list, or maybe you actually have multiple of them. But if you're like me, you probably can't be bothered actually visiting the website, especially in my case, because I use Kitsu. And if you use Kitsu, you'll know that the website is really slow, it frequently breaks, and honestly is just all around a bad experience. Not to say that my anime list is any better, they're all pretty terrible, but I don't want to go to the website. So back when I was on Windows, I was using an application known as Tiger, but Tiger only supported Windows, and if I remember correctly, it wasn't really being maintained much. So in my case now, what I'm using is an application known as Trachma, which was mentioned to me by one of the guys on my Discord. So this supports all three of the services I mentioned before, but there are some dedicated MyAnimeList interfaces that probably are pretty good, but because I want to use Kitsu, this is basically the only one I can work with because this is the only one that actually supports Linux and is still being maintained. But even so, I really think this is a good application. Now, what you're looking at here is just the GTK interface, which is my preferred way to access the application. But there is also some other ones we can use as well. So if we go into my terminal, there is actually a cursors interface, which looks a little something like so. There is a CLI interface, which basically acts as like a, I guess, a track shell. We also have a QT interface as well that looks a little something like so. Uh, select the account. There we go. I don't have a QT theme available, so it is going to look a little bit ugly. And there is also a QT4 version available as well. But whenever I try to open up the QT4 version, it seems to break. I don't know if I'm missing a dependency or what the deal is there, but I just can't use that version. Regardless, the GTK version is my favorite version. Now, I'm not going to be going into the features of all of the individual interfaces. I will look at the track Michelle in just a bit, but the GTK and the QT versions are basically the same. They're just laid out slightly differently. Also, this is a GNOME-style GTK application, so there's going to be a hamburger menu in the bar up here, rather than just having, like, a bar along the top here, like a sensibly designed application. I can accept that I've come to accept that hamburger menus are just the disgusting future we need to live with. Now, as for the main interface here, there's nothing really that crazy going on. So, anything that is blue is something that is currently airing. Anything that is white is something that is finished airing. Anything that is yellow is something that's actually currently available inside of your media folder. And then if we actually go and play something in there, like say this one right here, that should turn uh, Megalo box into purple in just a moment. Sometimes we have to skip ahead through it. And there we go. Now it's actually purple. And then one really cool thing with this is when you go and finish watching something, it should go and update it inside your list. Now, I've been trying to get it to work while actually skipping ahead in the video, but it's not actually going and updating it. Usually it's going to work perfectly fine, but I guess skipping ahead like that does kind of break it. You can also go and control stuff like that manually though, so we can go and set our progress up here. We can set the score for it, we can set what state it's currently in, so right now it's in watching. But if I go and say put it to dropped, it'll then be moved over to this list, and it'll be taken out of this one. Let's go and put it back, so back on watching, and there we go. And as we actually update that, it'll be updating over on the Kitsu website as well. Now there is this play next button up here as well. But no matter how many times I press it, I've never actually got it to work. It's clearly doing something, and if I go and open this up from the terminal, it does say it's trying to play the next video, but it never actually opens up MPV. I'm not really sure what the deal is there, but I'm just used to opening stuff up from my terminal file manager anyway, so it's not really a big deal for me. Right now we're just looking at the anime list, but there's also some other stuff supported on Kitsu as well, like manga and drama. I didn't realize the dramas were actually on Kitsu, so I don't actually have anything on my list. And if you use something like, say, VNDB instead, which is another one of the supported services, it'll have visual novels in there as well. And especially in the case of Kitsu, which has a really, really broken search, having a search button in here is really convenient. So let's say I wanted to go and add something like, I don't know... Uh, Symphogear, for example. So go and search for that, and there we go. All of the seasons and OVAs of Symphogear are there. We can go and add any of these. I have all of them on my list, though, so I can't exactly add them. Now, out of the box, this yellow text isn't actually going to work because by default, it's not sure where it should be searching for the media. So if we go into this menu here and go to Preferences, 
as we can see, there's a couple of things we can set in the media tab. So we can go and work with a Jellyfin server or a Cody server or even a Plex media server. In my case, though, I just have stuff stored locally, so I just point it to the folder that it needs to work with. One other thing is that just quitting the application window doesn't actually go and close the application. As we can see up here, it's still available in my system tray. We can go and quit out of the system tray icon up here, or we can go into the preferences menu here and click on quit there. I guess you could also quit out of it from HTOP as well, but these are the main ways you're going to do it. On that note, let's actually quit the application and go back to selecting an account. So Trachma GTK. And as we can see, I just have one account listed here. But we can go and add as many as we want. So if we go to add here, it's going to show us the services that are supported. So Annie List, Kitsu, My Anime List, Shikimori, and also VNDB. I don't have accounts on any of these other services though, so I can't exactly test them. So let's go cancel there and go back to my main account. And if we want to switch at any point without quitting out of the application, all we need to do is go into the menu here, go to the accounts, and it brings up the exact same prompt from earlier. You can also delete an account at any point and you can remember which selection you want to make. So if you have, you know, all five of the accounts in here, you can remember which one you want to be your main one. But for most people, this is basically going to be everything you need for the application. There's some other things you can go and tweak, like you can go and tweak, say, like the colors and stuff, but I like the default colors, so I'm not going to bother changing them. And also, we can go and synchronize with the service we're connected to at any point, but it will go and synchronize the application when you first open it up and also when you make any changes. Earlier, I said the GTK and the QT interfaces are basically the same, but the same is kind of true for the Curses interface as well. Really, the only difference that you have between the interfaces is rather than having mouse support in here, now everything's going to be done with your keyboard instead. But it's pretty straightforward how it actually works. And there is a help menu in here as well. And the key bindings are pretty straightforward. You can go up and down with your Vim keys and you can go between the different lists with the L and the H keys basically just working with Vim keys. Everything else, though, is going to be on the screen. Now, as for the shell, I guess, thing, whatever it is, I'm, I'm going to call it the Trachma shell. That one is a little bit different. It's not entirely clear how to use it, so if you have multiple accounts here, they will all be numbered. The one you want to log into, just select the number for that one and press enter. And this is why I call it a shell. So if we go and type help in here, basically it acts like any sort of shell or interpreter prompt actually would. Now, the reason why I'm even bringing this up is because if we go and quit out of this and we go and run trachma a to select the account we want to use, in this case, I'm going to use account one and then dash D to go and run the command. This will actually let us go and run any of the commands outside of the shell shell sort of prompt thing. So we can go and pass this data as much as we want. Now, one problem I do have with this is there's no way to get just raw output. It's always going to have this color formatting in here, which does sort of limit what you can actually do, but it is still a nice addition to have. Another problem I have with this is there's no way to actually list out the account. So you have to actually know what the ID of the account you want to open up is. Otherwise, you can't actually do it. What I would like to see is something like, I don't know, Trachma dash D, and then if you go and run, say, accounts or something like that, it would then list out the accounts rather than going and taking you into the prompt like this. But if you go and actually run Trachma dash D, and then run list or something, it will then prompt you for the account. And then if we go and select an account, then it's going to output the results and quit out of the application. So they're half of the way there. They just didn't really make it so it's easy to get the account numbers. So for the general usage, I would probably never use Trachma in this form because it's really just less convenient than all of the others. If you want to use it from your terminal, Trachma Curses is just as good as the GTK version. And that's as low as I would go. However, if you're trying to do something repeated, the CLI tool might actually make a bit of sense. It would make more sense with raw output, but still, it's at least something. Honestly, there's not much else to this application. It does a very simple job and does it pretty well. Besides the little bug with playing next, but I don't really use that, so for me, not really a big deal. Now, I've installed this from the AUR, and when you install it from the AUR, you get Trachma, Trachma Curses, Trachma GTK, Trachma QT, and also Trachma QT4. 
I don't know about installing it from, say, Fedora or Gentoo or OpenSUSE or Void Linux if you get everything, but I presume you probably do. There is also a Docker image available as well if that is how you would like to set it up. However, on anything else you're using, you can also install it with pip as well. Now, while this isn't perfect, all I wanted from it was something slightly better than the Kitsu website. And it absolutely delivers on that front. It does everything it needs to do. And the Kitsu API seems to be far more consistent than the servers are. And because it doesn't really matter if it's updating instantly, as long as it updates at some point, it's going to be perfectly fine. And this makes it so I actually go and update my list on somewhat of a frequent basis. Basically because I don't actually need to do it. As I'm watching stuff, it just does it magically for me. I've been using this application for about a month or so now, and honestly, I never see myself getting rid of it because it just simplifies my life in just one little aspect, and that's all I could ever want from it. I did mention some media servers earlier, so if you want to go and run them, but you don't want to run them at home, maybe try out Linode. If it runs on Linux, you can run it on Linode. They have the distros you'd expect available like Ubuntu and Debian, but also Arch and Gentoo because why not? They've got multiple server plans available, so whether you want to host a blog or even a personal VPN, there'll be one that fits you. I'll be using Linode to host all of my community game nights. If you need help, Linode has 24-7, 365 support available by phone, regardless of your plan size. Right now, you guys can get started on Linode with $100 credit by going to the link on screen or in the description down below. Linode was in the game three years before Amazon entered cloud computing, so you know they know their stuff. A huge thank you to Linode for sponsoring the channel. I think that'll be everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Donald, Michael Andrew, Nathan David, Will, Brennan, Chico Bento, Jimmy, Joseph, Mitchell Pinity, Stephen Tony Shah, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go and support work, there will links down below to my Patreon, subscribe style, Libra Pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey and BitChute if you'd like to watch it on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's everything for me, and 